enjoyed the networking session I participated in, and I hope you did as well. Now we're in for a real treat. I'd like to welcome Dr. Ruslan Bassiutin to the Zoom stage um, for a brief uh, question and answer session. And by brief way of background, um, Ruslan has had a successful career in the insurance industry, is founder of Master Goal, an executive coaching and training program, and is founder and president of DCP Help, a not-for-profit whose mission is to provide comprehensive support to families with children with cerebral palsy and other organic disorders of the nervous system. Ruslan and his wife, Olga, have been married for 10 years and are the proud parents of Alice, nine, who has severe cerebral palsy and is unable to walk or talk. Ruslan was also featured in episode 148, which aired in May of 2021, so just a year ago. And then again, in a special episode, number 191, uh, which aired March 9th, just two weeks after Russia invaded Ukraine. Ruslan, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, David. Uh, I'm happy to be part of your community. I have 101 questions I'd like to ask, but let's start with how are you, Olga and Alice, doing now? Um, basically, okay. It's uh, much better than back in Ukraine. Uh, of course, we experience some mm, new problems, some uh, lack of comfort or uh, lack of our traditional way of life, but it's natural. Uh, fortunately, we are hosted by very kind people. Uh, they are really open heart and uh, uh, they, are, they are supporting us by all means. And they let, first of all, Alice feel happy uh, living in their house. And also we, uh, we experience the support of local community and um, uh, of local NGOs. Uh, at the same time, uh, of course, we need uh, something more and we, we actively work for that, uh, but uh, it depends on us. As for Europe and as for uh, people here, uh, they really indeed open their, open their hearts and their homes and support us uh, sincerely and uh, very much. Yeah, well, thanks for sharing. And uh, let's roll the clock back a little bit just for everybody's benefit who might not have listened to the first episode you did or the more powerful one that you did on March 9th, just a couple months ago now. And share with our uh, attendees today and those who might be listening in the future, uh, the difficult decision that you made to leave Ukraine and the events that led up to your decision to do so. Yeah, the decision was really difficult because we created a real paradise for our daughter back at home with very good and high level conditions, uh, living conditions, uh, health support conditions, caring conditions and love around her or with uh, all people around her, relatives, friends and um, uh, professionals. Uh, but uh, for us, uh, your safety is the, uh, the main value. So that's why we've decided not immediately, because frankly speaking, as for me, I didn't believe till the start of the war early at 4 a.m. Uh, that it could happen. Uh, we had a lot of people in Ukraine who predicted war, who believed in war, but I was not among those who believed in real war. That's why for me, it was a kind of surprise. So. Uh, at the same time, being an experienced person and having some military experience in my past, I was prepared for it physically. So I had reserves of fuel, I had reserves of uh, uh, food and uh, uh, reserves of uh, money. So physically, we were ready to move, but uh, it took us two weeks to, to become ready mentally. And uh, after a lot of discussions and um, planning, we decided to move. And um, uh, yes, the, the way was very hard. Uh, but at the same time, our daughter, Alisa, she, she discovered a lot of new potential of her uh, during the way. So it, it's appeared to be possible to travel with her 
it's appeared to be possible to stay in the night uh, uh, in the middle of nowhere. It's appeared to be possible to eat outside uh, in camping or in a, in a, in a motel, uh, wherever. It's appeared to be possible to spend a few uh, uh, days in a car. Uh, so at the same time, we, we've got a lot of uh, positive experience uh, during, due to this uh, decision. So finally, we appeared in Slovakia and uh, we were happy to um, escape from all of that. But yes, I, in the beginning of your speech, uh, in the beginning of the conference, you mentioned this uh, survival uh, guilt. I would not say that I really suffer from it, but of course I experience it. Uh, and especially because uh, I'm a man, I have hands, I can walk and I'm not there. And uh, yes, I, I have some uh, bad feelings about that. But for me, Alisa for the last 10 years was the main goal in my life. So I'm not uh, feeling ashamed of my decision. Uh, and by the way, uh, immediately after arriving to Slovakia, I started to take care of uh, all other mm -hmm. families with uh, children with disabilities arriving to Europe and UK. So I became coordinator. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, especially for those who are suffering from uh, cerebral palsy. And uh, I um, built a network with the local and international NGOs. And now we are actively coordinating five big organizations and plus mine, not very big yet, but still very active. We are coordinating these activities. People coming, meeting, uh, distributing, uh, supporting with equipment, with money, with uh, legal assistance, with the taking decision and so on and so forth. So uh, basically I would say that uh, our project is uh, successful so far, but we'll see. We, we are not going to stay here and overuse uh, the kindness of our hosts. So we plan to move further uh, to UK or Canada, and then uh, from there, uh, make our activities more uh, efficient. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing. And at the risk of looking backwards as opposed to forwards, I'm wondering if you can recall, you know, in advance of making that difficult decision, um, what do you take with you, right? What do you leave behind, um, you know, with the anticipation that you might not be coming back? Uh, could you go back to that day, couple of days that led up to the decision and how you decided what goes in the car and what doesn't? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, <laughs> good question. Uh, for me, uh, as I said, uh, I was physically ready, so just necessary stuff. Uh, some reserves of fuel and food. The, the, the main thing that we took with us was uh, trust to each other and uh, real practical hope. Uh, that was much more important than a bunch of uh, uh, stuff. So uh, technically, it was, uh, as, as, as usually, uh, the, the reserve of fuel, the reserve of food, the reserve of money, the reserve of uh, source, sources of uh, energy but uh, that, that is it we have a very uh, good saying very popular right now in ukraine now the life uh, uh, can be uh, taken with you in a suitcase so people suddenly um, understood and realized uh, that uh, there is uh, not so much really so many so, uh, really important things it's just necessary to have a couple of t-shirts, a couple of pants and uh, one pair of shoes, but to be uh, alive, to be safe and to be, uh, uh, to remain with hope. So uh, that is that is something coming to my mind uh, as answering your question. Well. Yep, thank you. Um, and you still have relatives and friends who are back in Ukraine. How are they holding up? 
Uh, fortunately, uh, the things are not uh, so bad in uh, my native region, uh, in uh, Kiev region. So people are starting to, to trying to um, recover in, in terms of business, in terms of activities. Uh, but uh, the times are really difficult because, for example, right now we have a huge deficit of fuel, so it's impossible to fill uh, your the tank in the car. First of all, it's extremely expensive. Uh, the second thing, it's impossible to find uh, gas or diesel. And a lot of similar problems. Uh, there is uh, enough food, but uh, very bad transportation, a very bad business situation, a very bad financial situation. And uh, in Kyiv, this is a capital of Ukraine, so it's more or less uh, okay. But if we take Kharkiv region suffered from the attacks, if we take part of Kyiv region suffered from attacks, if we take occupied uh, uh, south of Ukraine, Unfortunately, uh, we um, can just hope and uh, believe in our armed forces and uh, support uh, from the West. But people are okay. Ukrainians appear to be very uh, life-oriented, uh, uh, very aggressive in terms of fighting with the uh, uh, enemy and full of trust. That's that's amazing because it's an open secret that we've uh, had um, many political conflicts and um, uh, they were based, first of all, on a uh, difference uh, between Russian and Ukrainian language, cultural difference between West and East of Ukraine. But right now uh, they are disappeared and we can say uh, that we are united. Yeah, well, it's unfortunate the way that uh, the Ukrainian citizens have become united, uh, given the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. And I'm wondering, with the benefit of a couple of months since you left Ukraine, um, has the situation changed? Do you view the situation any differently than you did back in March when you left for Slovakia? Um, at that time, when we left uh, Ukraine, it was a lot of uh, panic, uh, a, a lot of... Um, then uh, another period came when people uh, became exhausted, just exhausted with uh, all these new uh, conditions of life. Now, uh, most of people got used. It sounds terrible, but they got, got used. Um, some of my friends from Israel uh, told me that they, they, they know and they feel the same what it means to live uh, with war and uh, unfortunately i don't see uh, the close end of this war uh, and um, yeah i can be optimistic i can uh, draw very nice pictures in my mind but to be realistic uh, we are far from the end of the war so uh, fortunately at this situation most of people got used to war and surprisingly very many people are returning from Europe to Ukraine even in such bad conditions uh, they decided that they tried uh, they enjoyed or yeah it happens sometimes that people are not enjoying staying here yeah but of course it depends on situation and personal attitude but many of people uh, came back over 1 million uh, uh, temporary protected Ukrainians already came back uh, to Ukraine. Some of them uh, don't have houses, uh, uh, homes, they are ruined. Some of them don't have friends, but they still believe uh, that they can be more useful and be more happy uh, back at home. That's a phenomenon it should be studied, of course, uh, now in the future. But right now we have uh, this kind of unusual patriotic uh, wave. Uh, people are coming back from, uh, and, and uh, most of all, uh, those people who fleed Ukraine, they are uh, uh, mothers with children. And still they, uh, they are coming back. Uh, some of them even after losing their uh, husbands and fathers, 
but they come back. They, they don't feel good without motherland. And uh, answering your question, frankly speaking, uh, looking at the situation, as I've said, um, I, I don't like empty hopes. Uh, I, uh, I like hopes, I like to be hopeful, and yeah, it's necessary to pray and hope and believe, uh, but objectively, uh, we should be prepared for a long-term war. Yeah, well, it seems inconceivable, right? That you'd have to uproot yourself and potentially start over, right? Um, in a new country. You had mentioned uh, England or Canada, potentially. And I remember uh, part of your uh, educational history was that you studied in Russia, right? So you got to know the culture there a little bit, and no doubt you've made some friends, right? People that have been acquaintances of yours for uh, quite a long time. And I'm wondering if you've been in contact with any of them or what their perspective is. Okay, I, I probably will not open a big secret to you. You, you probably know the, the description of present day Russians attitude to all the events. I experienced it myself. Very educated people, uh, very high level of culture, it seemed to me. I mean, among my friends, even my teacher, my uh, mentor, uh, the academician, the uh, professor and doctor of all sciences in the world, very famous scientist, he was calling me and uh, uh, begging uh, li to leave Ukraine because of this Nazi, because of this uh, um, Bandera stuff, and so on. Uh, they are like zombie. So what can I say? <laughs> Even well-educated people, most of all, not all of them, but most of all, uh, they are zombied by very well-organized uh, propaganda. And uh, yes, you've mentioned my past in uh, Russia. I didn't live there. Yes, I've studied distantly in the Russian Academy of Education. And of course, I have a lot of friends there, but I studied in Soviet Union. And I remember this approach to propaganda. I've studied this approach. And I was a part of propaganda. Now it becomes extremely better <laughs> and efficiently. So uh, unfortunately, people there are um, um, in the, they are dependent physically, emotionally, mentally on this propaganda. They just don't believe. Even if they are not uh, aggressive enemies, if they are not uh, shooting you, they are trying to convince you. So you are blind. You are stupid. Please wake up. Come to Russia. Come uh, to other countries. Please leave this Nazi Ukraine. So they, uh, from my side and from uh, the side of all uh, Ukrainians, they look mm, weak. Uh, they uh, uh, look really uh, mentally suffering or stupid. So uh, the, the, the worst thing is that it is impossible to argue. Absolutely. It's impossible to put forward arguments, facts, and so on. This is a blind uh, trust and uh, rejection of all rational arguments. So uh, my choice was to get rid of these friends. Yes, that was a painful choice, but uh, I am okay without such um, changed-minded uh, friends who, uh, who don't believe in uh, my country, who don't believe in, in uh, world culture, who don't believe in uh, a realistic manner of thinking, and who don't believe in me. Yeah, well, thanks for sharing. Um, I don't want to be a hog, because I have, like I said, 101 questions. But if there's somebody who's with us that wants to put a question in the chat, um, yeah. I'm happy to uh, pose the question on your behalf. Um, so. Uh, Please, if you do have a question, pose it in the chat. But uh, I was sort of curious to know um, if you're able to get services for Alice, right? Any therapies, uh, even though you're there, you know, sort of an open-ended or a temporary period of time. Unfortunately, 
we and not only uh, us, uh, many families with uh, children with disabilities faced a lot of problems here. Um, it was a lot of uh, promises, declarations, and still, again, I am grateful to local people, to the countries uh, who opened again their hearts and homes for Ukrainians. But if you go to details, uh, it's still a lot of questions and uh, problems. And people are, as far as I'm a coordinator, they're calling me, they're writing me, they're asking questions, they are begging to help, at least with information. And very often I can't do that. Because if you go to specifics, uh, to details, how much, financial support, what rehabilitation procedures are guaranteed and covered, uh, what is accessible, what is not, what about special accommodation and special equipment and uh, rehabilitation chairs and blah, 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 blah. Absolutely not ready ground. So in each um, specific case, we should build the solution from the zero level. Uh, usually uh, using the uh, volunteers, uh, usually using NGOs, uh, usually sometimes using local councils, but almost never uh, the country level, the state level. Again, no rejections general. Everybody is ready. Everybody is happy to support, to help. But if, uh, for example, I would like to figure out uh, how much um, okay, personal, I don't need this support, better uh, other would get it. But some mothers are crossing the border without money at all. So if we try to figure out how it is um, designed to support them financially, no answer. In some countries, this support is just symbolic. Again, people are not beggars and Ukrainians are very very proud of themselves and never uh, go uh, for begging money. They just need to know. They just need the clear situation to be able to plan. They stay here. Uh, I know hundreds of ladies who came to Europe and they started to find job immediately on the second day of their staying in Europe. Give me a job. I would like to work and earn money and pay taxes and provide myself and not be dependent. No. Again, the gap. A lot of gaps, unfortunately. But at the same time, uh, at the same time, uh, we, together with uh, a few NGOs, we are uh, building these solutions. We are knocking the doors. We are applying for additional information and services. And day by day, it's becoming better. My, uh, I'm afraid that the day when it becomes uh, excellent, uh, many Ukrainians at uh, this time, they will uh, lose their hope and uh, uh, go back. Uh, and uh, this is a risk because right now it's too early to return, unfortunately. Uh, that's why we are we are doing our best to to make them stay here, uh, to make them comfortable. Of course, I am talking about those who have children with disabilities because this is my specificity. This is my profile, and uh, they are very motivated. Uh, they are never stopping. Uh, a lot of local people uh, say when people when the Ukrainians arrive to Europe, please have a rest. Uh, relax for a couple of weeks, and then we'll see, no. The next day when they got uh, sleep, they, they uh, got rest, uh, they start to find the ways how to develop, how to survive, how to provide themselves, how not to be dependent. Um, so yeah, like this. Well, thank you. Um, we have a couple of questions. Uh, the first of which is from Jeremy, and uh, I'll just read it. Are there places online that we can go to potential volunteer to be a host to families or provide support in some way or another for the refugees coming from Ukraine? Yes, of course. Uh, right after my um, speech <laughs> or our session, I will post 
uh, in our chat, uh, uh, our coordinates. And of course, yeah, please share your goodwill and uh, readiness and we'll try uh, to use it in a proper way. But you know, just another, another example, UK, uh, 200,000 uh, people, families are ready to host Ukrainians. And this is a great, huge, amazingly huge, fantastic problem with visas issue. It's already became international problem. A lot of scandals and conflicts around it. And the Home Office of UK still keeping delaying the process of uh, issuing visas. It's amazing. But uh, I, I have friends in palace, uh, in House of Lords and I ask them, what are you doing? Is it possible to influence somehow? It is difficult. It's a tradition. It's our traditional bureaucracy. It's at the same time, other people uh, get Canadian visas in three days, three. But in Canada, for example, there is no such program as in UK, uh, homes for Ukraine. So we should balance and find uh, different solutions according to specific cases. So thank you for offering this opportunity. I will inform everybody about uh, the, the address and please share your resources and we'll use them. Uh, there's a question from Elias uh, from Kenya, and I don't know that it is germane to the question about Ukraine, but uh, since he asked it, I'll mm -hmm. uh, read it. It says, I am from Kenya in Africa. Is there any place that one can get financial support, especially for education and therapies for his or her child globally through application? Right? Mm -hmm. and I don't know. It's hard to say. Know. Yes, I will try to answer, but in the frames of my uh, expertise. Uh, uh, unfortunately, even for uh, uh, Ukrainians fleeing Ukraine uh, because of war and uh, being participating in uh, special programs, uh, there is a great deficit of uh, opportunities uh, to, to cover rehabilitation, to cover special procedures for children with disabilities. Usually they cover first aid, paramedic uh, service or um, ambulance. Uh, other uh, services must be covered by NGOs or by people themselves or by uh, sponsors. Uh, that's amazing, but uh, I can say only about our uh, situation with uh, Ukrainians. At the same time, I know a few countries, it depends on the country. For example, in UK, it's possible to get this support if you are having the status according to the uh, legislation. If not, unfortunately, no way. Okay. So if somebody wants to help you or other families in Ukraine, what would you suggest? Um, a good question, because I, I, I fortunately, I receive uh, such questions and um, um, most of people would like to uh, provide dedicated support. So not to mm, send money to some account. And, and I, can I can understand them. Uh, so um, if uh, somebody is ready with some resources, it would be great to share uh, this readiness with few details. And we can find or not find, but just select or pick up uh, uh, the family from our list, because I have a list of uh, families who are uh, who need something. And uh, depending on country, depending on uh, the resource, I can uh, provide uh, the generous person with a few variants and uh, people can pick up uh, any family and uh, contact them directly, or I can support it with any type of assistance. Um, and do you expect to keep the DCP organization going, DCP help, or not? Yes, yes definitely. We've changed a little bit our profile from um, organizing uh, families with uh, children with disabilities, with cerebral palsy and uh, other neurological uh, neurology uh, diagnosis. In Ukraine, we've changed it a bit according to situation to supporting families with children with disabilities here uh, out of Ukraine. So yes, of course, I am already, in, in, in two months, my organization became much more uh, famous <laughs> and known. 
and respected. Uh, I, I like it uh, and uh, trustful. Uh, people know uh, us, people trust us, and uh, uh, people need us. And um, uh, I, I'm trying to do my best to uh, justify and these uh, status and to be as much responsive as I can. Yeah, well, that's fabulous. And I'm wondering if there's anything else you'd like to say before we wrap up, Ruslan. Uh, uh, yes, just a few thoughts to share with other dads. <laughs> um, I, I'm not confused to repeat that uh, my daughter uh, teaches me a lot and I am learning from her a lot. And it's not my illusion or a special perception of her presence because she can talk and she can walk and uh, still she is participating in my life very actively. And this is a fact. And uh, uh, what is very uh, important that, yes, 10 years ago, I've experienced a kind of um, existential crisis, but I survived. That's already okay. That means already that I'm lucky. And now my daughter makes me happy. And uh, um, it would be more correct to say that uh, by our mutual love, we make uh, happy uh, both of us mutually. And... Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very uh, important to my mind uh, to, to enjoy uh, being a father and a special father. And I'm doing this. I'm enjoying, uh, I, I enjoy to be a father and a special father. I love this way of life and I really enjoy it. And I try to share this energy with others. And uh, of course, I would like to thank you, uh, David, because answering your questions, I am growing, I feel growth <laughs> and I feel growing potential. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, know that our, our hearts and minds are with you. You'll be in our thoughts and prayers and that uh, we hope that there's a resolution to this uh, conflict uh, sooner than later. Um, and that uh, we'll be able to uh, keep the lines of communication open and to touch base with you periodically. And uh, I'll try to do the best job that I can to be the uh, point person or point of contact for anybody that wants to help directly or indirectly uh, to your situation or to other Ukrainians for that matter. So Ruslan, I just want to say thank you again and best wishes to you, Olga, Alice, and uh, all the Ukrainians uh, who've been impacted uh, directly or indirectly there in Ukraine or around the world. Thank you very much. And by the way, thank you very much for financial support. For, sorry for uh, I, I forget to, to thank you at the very beginning. I've got the financial support from other dads from your community, and uh, I'm really touched. Thank you very much. So, uh, so thank you for that, and thank you for general support and attitude towards us. Well, that was amazing. Um, well, we've reached the uh, end of our conference. I uh, hope you found the information of value made some new acquaintances, uh, learned a thing or two of value and have a better understanding of the Special Fathers Network. Um, please be sure to spend some time at the 21stCenturyDads.org website. Uh, be sure to check out the um, podcast and the YouTube channel and subscribe so that you'll get updates uh, every time that there's a new uh, program posted. Uh, ask to be matched with a Special Fathers Network mentor, father or a more seasoned dad, uh, please be a volunteer. You know, we need more mentor fathers for that matter. Uh, please also look into being part of the Special Fathers Network Dads Meetup Group in your community or your company or within your not-for-profit. And for those looking to take a deeper dive, please consider being involved in the Special Fathers Network Mastermind Group Program. Uh, please also share the information with other dads you know. Um, it could be one of the most meaningful things that you do to help a, a like-minded dad. And thanks for being part of this year's conference. Best wishes for a good weekend, a fabulous Father's Day uh, this year. And uh, some of you have inquired about uh, merchandise. Um, uh, there's a handful of us that are wearing these uh, attractive t-shirts, some people might think. Um, there is a merchandise uh, section at the website. I don't know that everybody needs a Special Fathers Network uh, hat, 
but uh, there's a number of other pieces of uh, merchandise. And as a special thank you for attending uh, the conference this year, we're gonna send everybody uh, two Great Dad coins. Uh, one for you if you don't already have one, and then a second to honor another dad. And if you happen to have been involved with the Special Fathers Network, you can just use these to honor uh, another dad or two, perhaps uh, in advance of Father's Day. And lastly, I'd like to thank the planning committee, all the presenters, our sponsors for making today possible. We literally could not have done this without you. So that's all we have planned. I'll stick around for anybody that wants to uh, do a little bit more networking or have some uh, uh, after conference uh, conversations. So thanks again, and uh, look forward to following up with everyone.